Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The Nevada test site of the United States Atomic Energy Commission is used for experiments in nuclear detonations of relatively low explosive energy. Each Nevada test has added to scientific knowledge about development and effects of atomic weapons to strengthen our defense against enemy attack. Most tests have also been used for related research such as biological studies, which can be conducted only in the presence of a full-scale nuclear detonation. These tests of low-yield devices conducted in Nevada, instead of in the distant Pacific, have brought about saving in time, money, and manpower. The saving in time is particularly important because of its contribution to the nation's defense. The need for a convenient test site developed along with the increasing pace of weapons development. The Nevada site was selected because its isolated location provides safety factors in relation to blast and fallout, especially since the prevailing winds blow for many miles across a relatively arid region. Notwithstanding the isolated locality of the actual test site, its comparative proximity to research centers enables scientists and technicians to participate in a test one day and return to their laboratories the next. It is possible, therefore, to evaluate the data from one explosion in time for its results to affect later tests in the same series and so greatly increase the rate of progress. The Public Health Service is concerned with problems of nuclear radiation just as it is concerned with other factors in our society which may affect the health of the people. The Public Health Service officer in charge and his staff are stationed at the Nevada test site to conduct the off-site radiological program directly from the field. Radio net control is used to transmit information about test site operations from headquarters to off-site monitoring units in the field. The program is staffed by regular and reserve officers of the Public Health Service who are assigned temporary duty at the activity for training and participation in the operating program. Among the commissioned reserves are representatives from state health departments colleges and universities, and consultants to industry. These men have a technical background supplemented by previous orientation at the test site by the Atomic Energy Commission and Public Health Service. In addition to accomplishing the job of monitoring fallout, this program serves to provide a nationwide reservoir of personnel qualified to assist in the assessment and understanding of radiation sources related to atomic energy developments and to aid in civil defense activities in the event of an atomic attack. In the operating program, these men will serve as monitoring teams stationed in communities near the test site. These monitoring teams are composed of a zone commander and his assistant. One of their first duties is to become familiar with the radiation measuring instruments they will use and other equipment, such as fallout collection trays. film badges, air sampling machines, and milk and water collection bottles. Their duties also include distribution of film badges, establishment of fallout stations, measurement of radioactivity, collection of samples, and analysis of data useful in determining the nature, extent, and public health implications of fallout. In addition, they serve as liaison officers between the test organization and the communities. In summary, responsibilities of the zone commanders include, one, establishing a basis for cooperation with the people in the affected communities. Two, recording fallout, 
and reporting their readings to establish the fallout patterns. Three, measuring radioactivity and collecting samples after nuclear tests. Four, acquiring a knowledge of an area and the people in the community. Another phase of the training program consists of field demonstration of equipment operation. When the training course is completed, public health service officers are selected for assignment as zone commanders or assistants in areas near the test site. Communities within a radius of 300 miles are assigned monitoring teams. In addition, public health service mobile units monitor open areas and along highways between the communities. The cooperation of communities near the Nevada test site has helped the test organization achieve an unusual record of safety. Off-site activities begin about two weeks prior to the first detonation. Zone commanders immediately begin to acquire a knowledge of their zones. They meet town officials, survey community facilities, and establish personal relationships with the people in the area. Zone commanders meet with civic groups and explain why tests are held in Nevada, their value to the defense of the nation, and the past record of public safety. They tell the groups about the expanded film badge program for the communities to better determine individual exposure to radiation and other safeguards used to protect public health. Zone commanders provide newspapers with official press releases and pertinent information about pre-shot briefings, warnings, and precautionary measures. Through the cooperation of local newspapers, radio stations, and other available communication media, Information is routinely made available to the public. They meet local people, miners, ranchers, old timers, to whom they give factual answers to questions concerning possible radioactive fallout. All local law enforcement authorities, particularly county sheriffs and state highway patrolmen, are informed about the program. These officers aid the monitoring teams in several ways. They wear film badges wherever they go, and so provide a cumulative record of radiation exposure under varying conditions. The law officers are notified by zone commanders before a test shot, and on request, establish roadblocks and reroute traffic. One of the pre-test monitoring activities of zone commanders is the establishment of film badge stations. Badges are placed on the outside and on the inside to compare the shielding effect of various structures. Film badge stations are established at selected locations to help obtain a comprehensive record of any radiation dose caused by fallout. Zone commanders must also secure the cooperation of individuals in the film badge program. They also use this opportunity to tell people about controls used in the test operations to help minimize radioactive fallout and to protect public health. People of the communities contribute to the radiological health program by wearing film badges during the test period. Merchants cooperate with the film badge program. And so do people operating many types of enterprises. Far out from the heart of town, Industries and small plants also serve as film badge stations. Activities to establish film badge stations are extensive and include locations which furnish a representative sampling of possible fallout in the entire area.
In addition to distributing film badges, the monitoring teams must collect and replace these badges at regular intervals. Each film badge is numbered and a record made of the name of the individual or station, number and location, the date placed, and the date collected. If after examination of the film badge at the laboratory, accumulated gamma exposure is indicated, the person would be notified. Film badges not only can determine possible radiation exposure to individuals, but at some locations, radiation exposure to livestock can be measured. Air sampling machines, like film badges, are placed in many locations in communities near the test site. Another pre-test duty of each zone commander is to change the filter in each air sampling machine in his area. Exposed filters are taken to the Public Health Service off-site laboratory for radiation measurement. Continuous radiation recorders have been placed in some communities to record automatically the time of arrival of any fallout, its intensity, and in some cases the effective shielding by structure. Zone commanders also established fallout tray stations. The trays collect radioactive particles which fall from the bomb cloud. The fallout trays set out in selected places in the communities provide another method to measure radiation. The surfaces of the trays are coated to hold the radioactive particles. Atomic Energy Commission controls for reducing fallout at the test site include the use of techniques such as increasing the height of towers, the use of anchored balloons, deep tunnels, and stabilizing the soil immediately under the fireball. Even so, weather continues to be a major consideration in keeping exposure from fallout to a minimum. At the test site, pre-test weather briefings consider the possibility of downwind, rain or snow, the wind direction and speed at various altitudes and high and low pressure areas. These factors in turn will indicate the points at which fallout is expected to occur from clouds at selected altitudes at 6 and 12 hours after detonation. Adverse weather developments can cause a postponement at any time up until the last minute before the scheduled detonation. The staff of the Public Health Service off-site operations study weather conditions predicted to follow the test. Health officers in Nevada and adjacent states are advised of the estimated path and rate of travel of the cloud, so they will be prepared to report fallout levels in their localities. Prior to the scheduled shot time, mobile monitoring teams are sent to measure radioactivity in areas within the predicted fallout range. A message is to go off as scheduled. All monitoring teams are called by car numbers to acknowledge shot time and receive special orders. Uh, 215, net control. 215, 10 4, 10 4. Zone commanders confirm the shot time, change the air filters, and set out their fallout trays. Zone commanders then notify the community officials to inform the people about the planned bomb test. If there is a possibility that the flash of light from a detonation may startle motorists on the highways, roadblocks may be necessary. Zone commanders meet with the county sheriffs and state highway patrolmen to plan roadblocks or diversions of traffic to other roads. The Civil Aeronautics Administration warns planes away from the projected path of the radioactive cloud. 
All preparations have been carefully planned and executed. At shot time, all personnel at the test site wear extremely dark glasses or turn away before the flash of light. Soon after the detonation, as the cloud moves off the test site, United States Air Force planes follow and track the cloud until it dissipates into a mildly radioactive air mass. Data from the aircraft are reported to the test site plotting and charting room. This information is in turn relayed to the Public Health Service off-site headquarters. A mobile monitoring team moves out to measure the fallout from the atomic cloud at the ground level. Meanwhile, the monitoring teams are measuring fallout in various sections of their areas. Measurements, times, and locations are recorded. The zone commanders report to net control all readings of radiation count found in their community. All sections of a community and outlying regions are checked for possible radioactivity. Motor courts, dairy farms, gardens, small pastures, large grazing areas, and ranches. Monitoring teams collect exposed air filters after each bomb burst and send them to the off-site laboratory, where instruments will indicate the radiation concentration on the filters. In each community, the fallout trays are collected after each test shot of the series and sent to the laboratory for measurement of radiation intensity. Exposed film badges are collected and replaced on a definite time schedule. Samples of milk are taken. Samples are collected from water supply. swimming pools. And streams used by livestock. All of the samples are taken to the laboratory for analysis. Meanwhile, mobile units measure the fallout along the highways and in other areas as required. They make specified runs measuring and recording fallout, time and location. After each specified run is completed, a report is made by radio to off-site headquarters. Further instructions are issued, such as to make a rerun or to monitor another sector. Mobile monitoring teams also collect samples and provide courier service for zone commanders in transporting samples to the laboratory at the off-site headquarters. Laboratory work includes the preparation of milk, water, and other environmental samples for counting, radiochemical separations, and for other determinations as necessary.
Air filters are checked for radiation count. Fallout trays are red for radioactivity. After the laboratory analyses, the radiochemist tabulates and summarizes all of the laboratory data and submits a report to the public health officer in charge for inclusion in off-site reports. This officer also receives written reports from mobile monitoring teams and zone commanders. A summary of the tabulated data will be supplied to zone commanders to be released to the people in their zones. A public health service medical officer is assigned duty with the off-site headquarters staff and serves as a radiation consultant to local physicians. On invitation of the local physician, he furnishes people in the off-site area information about the possible effects of radiation exposure on health. Veterinarians check with local livestock owners, examine their animals, and investigate any animal health problems that could relate to the test series. Beta burns have been observed on the skin of some cattle and horses grazing within 20 miles of the firing area. But more often, visible sores found on animals are caused from conditions other than radioactive fallout. For example, this owner learns that the sores on his animals are caused by ringworm, not radiation. Zone commanders, having reported all relevant information about the completed test, resume their normal activities. By this time, they are established as members of the community and reliable sources of information relating to public health problems. The people continue their day-to-day -day activities, confident in the knowledge that surveillance by the public health service and the careful controls and procedures of the Atomic Energy Commission have assured their personal safety. Public Health Service commissioned reservists who served as zone commanders returned to their homes and resumed their normal occupations, bringing with them their first-hand experience and know-how gained from the off-site monitoring activities. They put this knowledge to use in practical ways. This zone commander is contributing to his state health department's environmental monitoring program. He trains others in the expanding radiological safety program of his state. The use of equipment and analysis of data are important aspects of this training. Another zone commander, a physics professor, also serves as a radiological consultant to industry. Industry benefits by the establishment of a radiological safety education and training program to keep up with the increase in industrial and peaceful uses of nuclear energy. And the message of radiological safety activities is brought to our colleges and universities by other zone commanders who return home to resume teaching. Here, this professor of engineering demonstrates some of the equipment he used in the recent off-site monitoring activities in Nevada to a group of his students.
colleges elsewhere in our country also profit from the experience gained from the test program by public health service reserve officers. This science class is receiving the benefit of field experience gained by their professor in his work at the off-site nuclear test operations in Nevada. So public health service radiological safety activities are conveyed to the classroom, to the receptive minds of potential scientists, who are so badly needed for the future of this country to safeguard public health and the nation's defense in the nuclear age.